Hi, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create an ogive using the cumulative relative frequency. The cumulative relative frequency is the percentage, you can either put it as a decimal or a percent, that fall in that particular class. Um, it's similar to using the cumulative frequency. With the cumulative frequency, the nice thing is, is you know your in or the number in your sample by the end of it. Um, the cumulative relative frequency is useful if you're trying to find like the 50th percentile or the second or third quartiles. Um, remember, second quartile is the 25th percentile and the third quartile is like the 75th percentile. So I'll talk about a few of those things after we have created this. Um, it's very similar to create an ogive using the cumulative relative frequency um, as when just using the cumulative frequency. We would put on our y-axis, this would be the cumulative, and it's hard to write sideways, um, relative frequency. Okay, And down here what we're going to use is our upper class limit. And if you know the context of this, like if I knew that this was the upper class limit, say for a test score or the upper class limit for a weight or something like that, then I would put the context of the data. You always want to have the context for this one. I just have some anonymous data. Um, I think it was test scores or something like that from one of my classes. Um, but with this, you always, if you have the information and you're displaying this for a certain person or something, you want to make sure that you have the context included. Um, the upper class limit, we start with the class limit that's below our initial one. So since our initial one was 47, the class below it would have been at 46. And then I just use the upper class limit or this value right here for all of the other values. So I would do 46, 55, 64, 73, 82, 91, and then the last one ends by 100. We're going to use this as the cumulative relative frequency. So um, instead of counting up through 30, what we're going to do is we're going to use percentiles or percentages. So I'm going to start with 10% and then 20 and 30, 40. And like I said, you can do this as a percentage or you can use it as a decimal. 0.789, and then this always ends with 100% or 1, because um, that's the end of this value. 100% of your data falls by the end of the last class. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to just plot our points. Um, we had 0 to start with. At the end of 46, we had 0 that fell in this class, so there wasn't anything that fell between 46 or below. Um, by the end of the next class, so by the end of the 55, we had a total of, and this time we're looking at 6.7%, so almost 7%, so we would approximate where we feel 7% is, and that's where we would put our dot. By the end of 64, we had 23.3% of our data, so we would go above the 20, I almost went too far. And then we would see that that is a much steeper increase. Um, so there were more that fell in this category than in the last. Um, by the end of 73, we were up to 36.7%, so almost 40. So it was not quite as steep of an increase in between those two values. Um, by the end of the next class, we were all the way up to 70% of our data had fallen by the end of 82. So we can see that that is our steepest jump so far. So the most of our data fell, um, or the largest increase from one class to the next fell in this area. Uh, by the end of 91, we were at the 90th percentile. So that was like a 20% increase. And then by the end of 100, 100% of our data fell. Okay, so we could look to see where our largest increases were, where our smallest increases were, etc. So you could find information like that. The other nice thing about using the relative frequency is if I wanted to know the 50th percentile, what I could do is I could come to the 50th percentile here, and I could see that the 50th percentile falls um, between 73 and 82, so probably about the midpoint of those. Um, so we could say that it's somewhere around 77-ish. Um, 
but you could find where the percentile, if we wanted to find like the 75th percentile, we could, or the third quartile, we could see that the third quartile falls here. So we could use this to find other information that is important. It will help us to find our percentiles or what value falls at a certain place. Um, if you wanted to find the end of the 20th percentile or the 30th percentile, you could do the same thing. So the cumulative relative frequency is graph is very useful when you're trying to find certain percentiles or to find where um, the midpoint of your data is, things of that nature. Um, the 50th percentile, remember, is where um, half of your data falls below or above that. Um, but there's a lot of information that you can do. Hopefully this helps you and you can figure out how to create an OJive using the cumulative relative frequency. Um, if you have any other topics that you would like to see, please just let me know. Make sure that you check out all of the other videos that I have for statistics and algebra. And as always, thanks for watching.